had never done it before. They'd ne- they've never printed a car in a week and drove it out, and they were able to accomplish it at the show. And the IMTS guys were like, hey, look, if it doesn't work, we're 3D printing a car, and that's cool anyway. But they literally were able to drive it out of McCormick Place, which is yeah. just an awesome end to the story. Okay, yep, there's the lights. There we're we here. Go. We are. We are live. The last time we're on stage with Making Chips. And Friday afternoon. It's been a freaking week, man. It's oh, been awesome. I'm exhausted. Feet are killing me. So, so when we hear about Friday, it's like doing, a, doing the daily stand-up in my booth. Every morning we kind of huddle up, talk about what was great, you know, what we need to improve on with the booth. And then today they're, they're talking about teardown. And I'm like, guys, you know when you're on an awesome vacation and then you, you have to talk about, like, getting ready to fly home and, and it just up. kills the right. vibe? I was like... We're not talking about this. We'll figure it out later. I'm still loving IMTS. I've had, I mean, this has been such an amazing week. It's, I've, I'm blown away. I think the numbers, are, they, they, it would appear attendance is way up. I heard 20% I, more than the prior show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you been, guys have been, been in booths many, all day. This so. is by far the, the, the most packed one, most energy, the most, uh, yeah, just new tech. It's, it's so exciting. Yeah, speaking of new tech, we brought a couple guests up here today to help us with what was the most impactful stuff they saw. When The reason I say help us is because you have a booth, I have a booth, they've been packed. <laughs> we didn't even get to get out enough to see this whole show. There's halls I haven't even been to yet. But, um, I'm embarrassed why don't we, to admit that. Yeah, yes. why don't we introduce our guests? So. Do, sure. do we need to introduce these two? <laughs> yeah. Most people probably know them. They, but probably, they might need to introduce us. Yeah, I know. They've become uh, rock stars in their own right, especially over there on the end. Oh, thank it's, you, uh, thank you. Nush. She just goes by one name, like a Brazilian soccer player. <laughs> Nush, uh, Miss Swiss, you got a couple <laughs> brand names, but. I do, uh, I do. Um, it's been a really overstimulating, <laughs> overwhelming week, but it's been so exciting. It's easily the most exciting week of my life. I've only lived here like 21 years, but you know, it's been great. Wow, there, um, there's a quote, most exciting <laughs> week of the life. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and Chris. I mean, from my perspective, I feel like I've only attended IMTS Light in the past because <laughs> I, you know, I would come down for like a day or two from Milwaukee. This has been my first time doing the full back-to-back entire week, and it is now that we're here on Friday, just wild reflecting on all of the activities, the events, the connections, the booths, the technology, which we're going to talk about. Uh, it's going to be fun trying to distill this into, like, the best of, the greatest hits of IMTS. I've, I've told a few people all week, that whether they're back home or at the shows, like, how's the week going? I'm like, I really don't know. It's a blur. I, you talk about, like, distilling this down later. I, I don't even know if I can remember it all. Like, it's, it's been such a just day to day to day, hour to hour, minute minute. I'm going uh, to have to look at my camera roll. And just say, oh, yeah, that thing and that thing on this day and this place. What I would do, I did this last night at the concert we threw. I just spent five minutes just kind of standing up, like, in the balcony, just kind of soaking it in. Like, and if you can get... Was that before or after you went on stage and sang? That was before. That was before. So that was, yeah. That that was... Rocket. That was a good time. IMTS Rockstar. Literally, IMTS Rockstar. (laughs) Man, it was was a good party. We're going to turn that concert maybe into a bigger festival. There you go. Come, so that would be see. fun. <laughs> so it's funny what you said about, like, you'll have to look at the camera roll because, you know, I lead a sales team, and I'm telling my guys, if you have an impactful conversation, you've got to go walk over to the per- – we have a person assigned in our booth just to put stuff in our CRM because if they're anything like me, they're going to forget it all. So right. before they do, let's, let's talk about some of the tech we've seen, some of the important um, innovations we've seen at the show. And I think uh, what sticks the most and what we tend to remember the most is things – that we're passionate about, right? And so, Nush, I know you're really into cars and motorsports, and yes. that's kind of what got you into machining. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about like some of the things that you saw here that connected to that passion. There's a lot of race cars here, which I was really surprised about. A lot of parts on race cars are 3D printed, so in the 3D printing hall, they have a lot of that um, showcase. They also have the 3D scanning software, which is relatively new. Um, and exciting to look at, and it's a really good way to get people my age interested because we're interested in replicating parts and making our own parts, and seeing that possible is really exciting. Yeah. Paul, you're, you're yeah, I can relate. Yeah. I mean, yeah. cars are what got me into the machining industry. 
uh, yeah, there's a lot of Formula One cars, and there's a NASCAR right outside, and there's the 3D printed car that they did several years ago uh, here at the show. They printed it during the show. Yeah. And then they brought it back um, this year. It was 10 year anniversary. Yeah, I think, I think right? 10 year anniversary. They finally finished it this year, right? This was like. Well, they finished it at the show originally, oh, wow. but they brought it back and, you know, driving it around. Oh, that's and, dope. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, I seen it on their sweet. Instagram. I was like, oh, that's what's up. We did a whole episode on making chips uh, about that story. And what was so cool about it is they had never done it before. They'd ne they've never printed a car in a week and drove it out. And they were able to accomplish it at the show. And the IMTS guys were like, hey, look, if it doesn't work, we're 3D printing a car, and that's cool anyway. But they literally were able to drive it out of McCormick that's, Place, which is yeah. just an awesome end to the story. And you mentioned additive. Uh, I think one of the coolest innovations I've seen is combining additive and subtractive machining into one. Yeah. Um, you know, basically being able to take a big bar of metal, build up a boss by additive printing, and then finish machine it right in the machine. So rather than having to start with a massive piece, you can start with something much smaller, you know, and very quickly get to that finished part. It's just a, an amazing technology. Love it. Mike, uh, Monday we were up here, and our topic was... Uh, practical use cases of AI in a machine shop. Yep. And <laughs> be honest about what your original thought was. So, with this. so I, I was genuinely skeptical that I would see practical uses of, a lot of practical uses of AI in a machine shop. Um, I think probably the biggest thing I've taken away this week is there are a lot of practical uses of yeah. AI. I've the, and it's, we were, we were just talking a little bit ago and you know, we think about automation and, and our minds immediately go to the, the machines and the robots and the parts catchers and, you know, all these great things that speed up the machine process. But some of the business process automation that I'm seeing now, right? I mean, if I'm going to, if I can speed up my management team by automating scheduling processes and programming processes and estimating processes and those types of things, I've, I've now also increased my capacity. Yeah. Right? I know you did some stuff with Toolpath, right, Chris? I did. I was, I was literally just coming from an interview with Toolpath. I'm going to be like, speaking of estimating and using yeah. AI in a machine shop, I think a perfect example. And I was talking to Al, their CEO, and the way he described it was when he reflected on his days as a product manager, he want, like, there are a lot of things you can say yes to. There are a lot of jobs you think you can say yes to. You want to be able to say no to more of the right ones and say yes to the right amount that really, really makes sense so that things that you might miss in your quoting process, little things that can turn into a big cost oh, later yeah. on, that's where I'm seeing a super practical application of AI in the machine shop. Well, and bringing up Al, for example, so Nick and I just recorded with Al, and I think we'd be remiss to not talk about the other really cool thing at this show is the stories and the people, and I mean, Al's got an amazing story. I got to meet Nush for the first time in person. We've talked online for almost a year, and I mean, just all the relationships. I mean, really, at the end of the show, that's probably my favorite part, right? I mean, like, that's the best part of the week, but... There's a lot of really, really cool stuff going. Yeah. So I was over at the Hermley booth a little bit ago, and I was actually talking to one of my, uh, one of my recent guests on Machine Shop Mastery, who is, has a highly automated shop. They have, I think, 18 robots um, feeding lots of really cool machines. But uh, what he said, what actually just happened in their shop, and then I saw the actual uh, machine set up here in their booth, was they're at nighttime running apart, uh, it break a tool, the, the, the robot grabs the, the, the part that has the broken tool, puts that on the pallet, grabs a different tool, replaces the tool, puts a new fresh piece of material in and starts running wow. all in the middle of the night, completely wow. automated. So you don't have to like get a text in the middle of the night that your machine has stopped and someone has to come in and swap things out. It's like, that blows my mind. Or that's, come in in the morning to a pallet of bad yeah, parts. Yeah, 20 more bad parts. And the machine, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst case. So that, that reminds me of some of the stuff we show in my booth, and I hate, hate to do a little shameless plug, but it's totally connected to what you're talking about. Everything's getting more and more automated. This lights out dream that every shop feels like they're trying to achieve. You know, one thing can shut it down. You know, if you, if you don't have the proper chip and coolant management, you can shut it down. And 
So what we're incorporating into some of our products is sensors that allow you to monitor the condition of your coolant, the temperature, the concentration, the level of the chips in your chip in. And if you're able to do that, then you can kind of predict when things might shut down and prevent them right. from shutting down so you can get those eight hours or whatever it is of unattended machine time and be a more profitable shop. So some of that technology is really cool. And what, what IMTS does for us as an exhibitor is it, it really pushes us to bring new technology to market because you don't want to show up to prom without a suit, you know? Yeah. That's yeah, you great. can't show up two years from now and everybody passed you, right? Yeah, and just have the same stuff we had last time. It's like, well, what's new, right? So it, right. the IMTS itself pushes these new technologies in, into the market faster because everyone wants to show up and, and, you know. Be the coolest thing in the show. Exactly, exactly. Chris, what else have you seen this week that you thought was amazing? You know, one thing that's been on my mind is not just the cool technologies, but the context for why something is cool for our industry. And one of the topics that I feel has just come up nonstop throughout the week is how do we get more people into the manufacturing space? Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I'll just share a couple observations. I mean, I can't think of any other event where I've seen as many students walking through as I've seen yeah. just all week on any given day. You know, whether it's down in the student summit or just out here in the halls checking out everything this place has to offer. One of the companies, the technologies that stuck out to me this actually wasn't the first time I saw them. It's a company called, I think it's EOS or EOS. I don't know which yep. way it is. But they have a 3D printed, non-inflatable, I should say a 3D printed airless basketball that, oh. while not exactly like a basketball, it bounces and it, it uses no air whatsoever. It's 3D printed out of a polymer powder. And that was actually a basketball that they used in the 2023 NBA All-Star Game Slam Dunk Competition. Oh, really cool. And the same way, you know, I did a concert last night, right? I threw an event that the general public could also attend. I love how there are these, let's say, pop culture tie-ins or where we're doing these things that allow the general public to see cool applications of manufacturing or see our community in action. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why that basketball stuck out to me is, hey, not only is it a, you know, a cool piece of manufacturing, but it's something that has some cultural relevance as well. Yeah, well, you probably enjoyed uh, at the Mastercam booth, a fully machined guitar. Mm -hmm. People up there shredding the guitar. I may or may that. not have played that guitar at the Mastercam <laughs> after party on, uh, on Monday night. That's pretty cool. And, and Dean Zielinski, one of the designers behind it, um, incredible individual. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, Nush, what else? Yeah. Tying it to that, DN Solutions is machining a wheel in one of their machines, and that, and that is kind of like something that's exciting for me because I like cars and if I could publicize that if you like cars you can make your own parts imagine the amount of people that would be interested in manufacturing knowing that they have the power to make something that they're passionate in um, and then tying into automation the lights out um, manufacturing machine at uh, what is it the UR robots booth that was sick um, I don't know if you guys saw like and it's stop by, but it has 25 different parts that it loads, and they're all different, and it's all constant, like no human interaction at all, and yeah. that was overwhelming to like really wrap my head around. Yeah, so Chris, you mentioned basketball and connecting basketball to manufacturing technology. Nush has been talking about cars, connecting cars to manufacturing technology. I think that's the point, right? You know, we we have to connect it because you brought up like getting. The more people in, interested in getting a, a diverser group of, of future manufacturing leaders and that's the key I think we have to connect it to things that have a broader appeal It'd be like hey you know how that basketball came to be you know how they made that wheel or whatever it was and even just before we got up on stage the, the community and the conversations I was telling you guys about a, a one machine shop it's my stepbrother and he makes he makes parts on a little CNC and that um, modify cars for drifting yeah. And so I talked to Nush about it, and she's like, oh, send me that link. That's just like a microcosm of what this whole thing is. It's just exposure, conversations, connections, and then the technology spreads. Well, one of the things I love, uh, and it's not just technology here at the show, but it's become, you know, machining has become so accessible for people to learn about and see. We have more than a couple of customers that had never even seen a CNC machine in person in their life watched a bunch of YouTube videos, got excited about it, and bought a machine, had it delivered to their you know, parents' garage, 
and right. started a business, like would never having touched a CNC in their lives. That's you know, insane. and yeah, building car parts for their passion or you know, building whatever. And uh, it's the fact that you can do that these days, you know, is just so fantastic. Or even like a laser engraver. I have a friend that just bought a laser engraver. He doesn't know anything about manufacturing, but he's enjoying it. So I sent him links to the show, and now he's like thinking about coming next year and like is interested in it. Just like that. What, what, what is he going to use it for, do you know? Um, he's been engraving parts for people. He's been doing valve covers, um, just like random stuff. They have shift knobs that they want. Anything, really. Yeah, awesome. Well, he, even on a you know, similar scale, but, a, but more of a hobbyist, right? Jason, and the, when we recorded The Boring Bar a month ago, yeah. J <coughs> excuse me, Jason talked about his son saving m money to buy the 3D printer, yep. Yeah. right? Yep, yep. So a couple weeks after that, he asked me, it, He's like, is there anything you guys like have that I could have him print just so he can see how that's working? I think his son's 10, 11, 12. Something like that. Some, yeah. I mean, you know, young. Yeah. And, but just even that easy accessibility of now of, of, of some equipment and education that, you know, you've got a, a, a young, a, a very young kiddo learning these things and interested in make, making parts. So I sent him some of the models of stuff that we've done and... Oh. He's like, I want to. I want him to print them and send them back to you, and see like what's the quality and all that type of stuff. So, it's yeah. fun. I mean, there's there's certainly a lot of opportunity to, you know, bridge that skills gap by just all these resources that are here. It's it's amazing. I mean, can we talk about Jason for a second? Let's talk about and, him. Like yeah. instead of just connecting manufacturing to hobbies and things that are fun, um, our partner, Jason Zenger, had a massive heart attack earlier this year, and he's alive because of manufacturing technology. Sure. You yeah. know, and it's uh, that thought came into my head when I was at the United Grinding booth and I saw like some medical implants that are just mirror finish made on some incredible machines that are micron, you know, tenth millionths of an inch tolerances. And I'm just thinking about all the technology that got him through the heart attack and sure. kept him alive. And you talk about his son wanting to get a 3D printer, you know, his, right. his son can think. God and manufacturing technology for his father even being here right. in the first place. And it's like, yeah, this is important. You know, this is incredibly important. Well, it, it speaks to, to Paul's, you know, mission. I know you're on, you know, the, the thank a machinist, right? I mean, yeah. everything around us, how we all got to this show and everything else is at some point a machinist has touched that. Yeah. And in fact, when, uh, as you know, Jason lost a bunch of his fingers, yeah. right? When uh, through his recovery, and when we learned that he was going to get some uh, some prostheses on his hands, it turns out the company he's getting them made by is a customer of Pro Shop, <laughs> yeah. and they that was such a cool full yeah. circle moment. So it's just you know our software is helping enable the company that's making these custom prostheses for you know thousands of people like Jason to live more normal lives. Gosh, that's awesome, that's amazing, Paul. Yes, we haven't asked you what was. Well, your favorite things. What are the big things you're seeing, the trends? Yeah. Um, well, before I jump into that, I do want to mention the students. So, um, you know, we have a couple of student-run businesses that we donate our software to. Yeah. Um, and there was another student-run program uh, in Indiana that they brought 500 students to the show this week. Wow. That's, That's sick. 500 That's students. Sick. Yeah, wow. Absolutely That's incredible. So, it just... Uh, I, I hope some of those kids get into manufacturing and have careers, but, um, you know, I'm stuck most of the time over in the software booth or software, you know, hall over in the East Hall. Um, I mean, we, of course, are exhibiting some cool stuff, but some of our partners are doing really cool stuff. You know, Datanomics, I know you use Datanomics for machine monitoring. Yep. Uh, they're doing some new AI-powered stuff, speaking of AI. Um, we have uh, our friends at Paperless Parts have some really neat software for ingesting emails and turning it into quotes. Uh, we have another uh, similar technology, uh, a pretty newer company called Machine Research that's doing the same thing. Um, that one I love because they're actually a machine shop that runs ProShop, but they built their own estimating software oh, just wow. like we did, and so I can have a kinship with them in that regard. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, as you were saying earlier, Mike, you know, software enables maybe the front office side, because even, you know, we all can't find enough machinists, but you can't find enough estimators and planners and schedulers, so. Or you, accountants. Or, or accountants, it's, Everything's a shortage. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah, some of the things that software can enable are really powerful. I know you, uh, 
were, I was just watching, I was walking by, you were interviewing Google. You know, I, I was going to bring them up as well. If I think about cool things, not only at the show, but just to show how IMTS has evolved. <clears throat> the fact that you see groups like Microsoft and Google Cloud with booths as marquee sponsors is pretty telling that there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of interest in this yeah. space right now. I mean, that Google Cloud booth, if you get a chance to go in there, um, it, the, the idea behind it is you can interact with Google, let's say in your business on the factory floor, the same with the same ease that you'd interact with Google or YouTube in your everyday life and seeing the things they're doing. They've got Leela AI out there, which is a platform that allows you to go through building your process step by step and leveraging AI to identify, hey, did you forget to put the window on this car? Like they have a little Lego simulation where you build a pretty basic Lego car. You can do them in batches of three or you can do them one by one to say, Hey, was it quicker doing each step on each single car at the same time? Or was it faster by doing one car, then the next car, then the next car? I love seeing how those tools are being utilized in manufacturing. And as someone that lived out in San Francisco for five and a half years, it's cool seeing that like West Coast, Silicon Valley, large enterprise show up at a spot like IMTS. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned uh, like accounting being approved and technology for accounting and, and finance or before you even touched the part with some of the uh, setups and programming and CAD CAM and all that. And I want to talk about some of the technology I see from like the media communications and marketing side, where, which is really like what brought me into the industry in the first place. And, you know, we look at like, Nush, your, your rise to fame here, just like, doing all sorts of stuff on social media putting yourself out there, reviewing uh, Chris's podcast, reviewing our podcast, saying, here's what I learned from it. And I rewind to the first time we were on stage, what was it, six, eight years ago, whatever it was, and we were like the only podcast in manufacturing. Right. And now Paul's got one, Chris has got one. No, she'll have one and probably by next week. <laughs> probably, but it's just, we'll see. It's, it's just crazy to see like all of that, all of the media and how much that's evolved. And I think that's really awesome because that's how you get all the, you know, more more like manufacturing tech stuff out into the world so that sure. people can see it and appreciate it and then adopt it. Well, it exposes it to people that you get to gain excitement about the industry where we're talking about filling skills gaps and so forth. Now there's, and the, the content creators that are around the show this week, they're so much fun. I mean... And I mean, we all we all have various pieces of that ourselves, but the ones that are here and they're dedicated and they're doing it. I mean, they they, they make it fun too. I mean, it's it's and everybody's they make like it friendly. too much fun. They, they, I have to like go to bed early. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's too much fun. I can't do this anymore. You're getting old, Nick. <laughs> I mean, it's like what the heck? My guys are like, hey, come out, hang out with us longer, and I'm like, I literally can't do it. Anymore. Can't do it again. <laughs> So, Nush, how did you first, like, what was the first podcast or, or uh, sort of machining media that you consumed that got you sucked in? The first one I listened to was Within Tolerance, um, yep. Protean Machining's podcast. And I literally just looked up machining when I was at work one day because I was like, I'm bored of, like, listening to my music. Let me just listen to something that's kind of related to what I'm doing. And then he started shouting out a bunch of people, and I started Googling them, and then I was like, why don't I just follow them on Instagram? Then I realized LinkedIn is where I could really connect with them. And that's kind of what snowballed into looking into your guys' podcasts and listening. And then I was like, maybe I could get some attention if I posted about their podcasts. And then th this is literally what happened. No, that's so wild. Uh, I was on my lawnmower 10 years ago, and I searched machining podcasts because that's what my family's done for three generations. And found making chips and then now here I am you know one of the partners and owners of the company and uh, hearing that from you it's just like brings the biggest smile ever to my face that you searched the same keyword and here you are on stage yeah. with us it's so cool I did the same thing eight years seven years ago when I bought my shop I was like I, I didn't even I don't think I'd ever even listen to a podcast but I knew people talked about them and I was like what's a manufacturing podcast found making chips which then like my first trip to IMTS was literally to just because to come see you. Chips. Yeah. yeah, because you were on making chips, and yeah. I came for one day um, because I needed. I, I felt like I needed a demo of Pro Shop, and yeah. I left here with Pro Shop, and yeah. um, and then just start snowballing, and 
it's yeah, it's a, it's such a great platform to to reach out and learn and teach and everything else. And since we're just doing full circle moments, Chris, we your podcast is named Manufacturing Happy Hour, and uh, we were like, okay, you start doing like happy hour tours and doing events, and they've just gotten progressively bigger. And what was it like three weeks ago or a month ago or whatever? We had probably the biggest one you've ever done yet as as a tag team and. Oh, yeah. yeah. So fun. It was incredible. And, you know, one, you know, while we're talking about interesting things we see here at IMTS, like you and I were just doing a little after party on a boat earlier this week. <laughs> so and nice. because it's just a wild week like that, and you end up on a boat. But we were talking to my buddy Mike White, who has that company, Seki, that is, he's like, hey, you know what a CRM is, right, for sales? But imagine if HR had like an ERM system, an employee relationship management yeah. system where you can reach out. And I know you were talking about getting out there, partying, and having too much fun, but just the other solutions you run into when you're just at the happy hour, when you're out afterwards, like there's always something new coming at you at this show, whether it's on the trade show floor, whether it's in the conversations that take place on a boat after hours. Yeah, it's funny you brought up Mike, because I, re I remember like a specific use case. Uh, I don't even know what it's, his software's called. I just remember what it does, and I was, I'm gonna call him and ask him more about it, because we're, we have one business unit where we have to hire like literally 200 people in the next two years. And it's really exciting, but it's really terrifying at the same time. And when you're bringing in that many new people, the, the first 90 days are really tough. You need them to show up consistently. And it's, I guess they just don't make them like they used to because a lot of people come in and they're, they're missing days on their first week. Well, this recognizes attendance and hey, you've made it five days, your first five days on time every day, great job. You've made it 500 days without a sick day, great job. Like, look, we're so impressed with how you take care of your health. And it's just constantly like automatically giving kudos to the employees based on just their attendance, their performance and things like that. You start to have a lot of employees, something like that can really come in handy. Absolutely. And I just thought it was a brilliant idea. Well, and, and it goes back to automating some business processes, right? Because I, I can tell you as a, as a shop owner that everything you just said are problems I have every day. Mm -hmm. um, it's, this isn't true anymore, but as of, I don't know, maybe two months ago, it had been two years since we had had everybody at the shop all day. Every employee was there wow. for a full from shift. start to finish for a full shift. Now there's a lot of reasons for that and they're all fine. Um, it's really hard to monitor on a, Yep. on a day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day basis. So yeah, I mean, that's automating that process. We can, Im we can improve our business and, and hopefully save time, build capacity, all those types of things. At the end of the day, that's why people come to IMTS. To, right. Ultimately, it's to improve their business in one way or another, whether it's new connections or new technology like we talked about today. And what we say, as we wrap up every episode of Making Chips is, if you're not making chips, you're not, not making, making money. money. Bam. Yeah. Bam.